Assalamualaikum. Good evening. Tuan Haji Abdul Latif and Hajar Sharifah Soraya, Professor Rehana Abdullah and Professor Rizwan Halim, Tan Sri Zul Hasnan and Puan Sri Ana Razak, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> For those of you who don't know, my name is Tasha and I am the bride's younger sister. The uncles and aunt <clears throat> the uncles and aunties call her Diana. Her friends know her as Farah. But for as long as I can remember, I have always called her Dana. So I hope you don't mind that I refer to her as such for the rest of my speech. Now, I have to emphasize that I am the younger sister. <laughs> because for some inexplicable reason, when people meet Farah and I for the first time, they always think that we're twins. Now this happens a lot, and that's okay. But when they find out we're not twins, guess who they think is the older sister? <laughs> so tonight, I am seizing this opportunity to clarify the facts with everyone. <laughs> Tasha is Ade, Farah is Kaka. <laughs> so please don't believe her if she tells you otherwise. Okay, anyway, I can't believe that this day is finally here. My sister is a married woman. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Leading up to the wedding, a lot of people ask me, how does it feel with Farah getting married so soon? It must feel quite sad because you and Farah are so close. And I always answer that it's exciting, but yes, it is also a little bit sad and a little bit bittersweet. Then when they find out I'm giving a speech, they say, oh, for sure you're gonna cry again. I'm always quick to say no, because I don't think it's going to be that kind of speech. Um, but after tearing up on several occasions during the course of planning this wedding, I've developed a reputation for being quite the crybaby when it comes to letting Dana go. So if anyone would like to play some bets as to whether or not this ends in tears, now would be a good time to do so. Because if you have met us, you would know that Dana and I, we are really close. We have almost all the same friends, we go everywhere together, and we share everything. When she went to Melbourne to study, I followed one year later. When I went to London to study, she followed one year later. Dana is the person I go to when I'm bored. because I can annoy her all I want and know that in the end, she has no choice but to still love me. She's the person I go to when I'm hungry because I know that chances are she's going to be hungry as well. She's the person I go to with all my problems because she's always there to listen and help in any way that she can. Oh, crying already, yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Dina. When you sent me that WhatsApp with the picture of your hand wearing the ring that I may had just proposed to you with, <laughs> I, was, I was overcome with excitement and joy for the both of you. But along with that, I felt a certain heaviness in my heart. For over 20 years, you have been my best friend and my confidant, my rock and my anchor. When we were abroad and it was just the two of us, you were also my mate, my cook and my driver. So knowing that you had finally met the one, the person you were going to spend the rest of your life with, it felt like the super sister bond that we shared would soon be broken. But I think Amir did an excellent job of handling and accommodating my rather clingy ways. <laughs> In fact, I remember the exact moment when he was when he went from being just Farah's fiancé to also being my brother-in-law. It wasn't when he gave Farah the perfect proposal on the beautiful mountains of Machu Picchu, which was awesome. It also wasn't when he flew all the way from London to surprise Farah and his whole family on the night of the Amiri State. For me, the day Amir became my brother for life was the day that he blinded me to an all-you-can-eat dim sum. <laughs> 
As I sat there, stuffing my face with dim sum, I realized that this fella had what it took to be a good brother. And it was then that I was finally ready to give the okay. Seeing as how I'm the adate, and I can't offer much in terms of marital advice, I had to look to other sources for inspiration. I tried asking daddy, but any attempt in asking daddy for advice on marriage usually ends in him telling a joke. However, daddy has always given me great advice when it comes to achieving success in work. So I wrote three examples down to share with Dana and Amir tonight. The first piece of advice, which daddy gave me and I'm now about to pass off as my own, is don't be afraid to make mistakes. So Dana, when you're at home and you're trying to make Ame some laksa joho and it really tak jadi, don't worry, you will get the hang of it. The second part is not so much advice as it is an important reminder, which is change will happen whether you like it or not. Ame, if Dana doesn't get the hang of making mummy's laksa joho, you might have to accept that laksa joho for you will never taste the same again. The upside comes in the third and final piece of advice, which is don't be afraid to challenge and prepare to be challenged. Amir, if Dana's laksa joho is not up to scratch, don't be afraid to challenge her to a laksa joho cook-off. And then don't forget to invite your sister-in-law. I trust that with such solid advice, I have now equipped you with all you need to embark on this amazing new journey together. Hmm. Dina. <laughs> From the bottom of my heart, I'd like to thank you for being the thoughtful, generous, I forgot to bring this, generous and wonderful person that you are. Thank you for making me laugh every day with the weird things that you say. Our nights in just being complete couch potatoes are some of the fondest memories that I cherish and hold dear to my heart. As much as I will miss those days when it was just the two of us, I'm so happy that you have found your person to be a couch potato with forever. I'm blessed to have you as my sister and I'm so proud of the woman you've become. I know you'll be as amazing a wife and mother as you have been a sister to me. I love you very, very much. Ame, I'm not just saying this because of the all you can eat dim sum, I really mean it. But I feel with absolute certainty that Farah couldn't have chosen anyone more perfect to be her partner and to be a part of our family. Please take good care of each other. Needless to say, I will always be here for the both of you. And I look forward to spending all my free time hanging out at your house, especially once I become an auntie. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank Mommy and Daddy on Dana's behalf. Mommy has been the life force and backbone of this entire wedding, devoting her time, energy, and efforts into making sure that Dina could have the wedding of her dreams. So, Mummy, our words and actions may never fully express how much we appreciate all that you have done for us. Daddy, with each passing day, you've had to watch in horror as we continue to burst the budget time and time again. We thank you for keeping your cool and calm throughout this entire ordeal. Finally, I'd like to thank everyone for being here with us tonight and for allowing me to ramble on for so long. I hope you have enjoyed the evening thus far and I hope you continue to have a wonderful night. Thank you. That's lovely family moment right there. That doesn't deserve an applause, that deserves an aww. Can we all have an aww? <laughs> That's fantastic speech. I guess.